Hello, and welcome back. In this video, we'll talk about arrays, loops, and branching structures in MATLAB, some of the main sort of coding structures and objects that are needed to handle things in MATLAB. So the main sort of object that MATLAB is built around is the array. A lot of things in MATLAB can be made easier or faster or simpler using arrays as opposed to sort of looping through things that we'll get to in a little bit. But there's a lot of fun things you can do with arrays, but the basics of them are important to be able to do simple coding things in MATLAB. So arrays are basically just a list of numbers or a rectangular grid of numbers or an n-dimensional grid of numbers that you want to do things with. You can also put characters in them for making strings, things like that, but we're basically dealing with numbers here. So for instance, I can define the array, which I'm gonna call ARR, that is going to be the uh, row one, two, and three in my script. If I put that in the actual command line to see what it looks like, I get a list of these numbers, one, two, and three. And that's putting spaces between them. If I can also put commas between them and get the same thing, and that gives me a row of numbers, I can also get a column of numbers. And as a trick, I'm hitting the up arrow on my keyboard here to get the last command that I have used. If I change these to semicolons and not commas, I get a column. Now about 85% of the time, it won't matter if you use columns or rows for dealing with one dimensional arrays or vectors. When you're dealing with matrices or multi-dimensional things, then it matters a lot more. But for vectors, about 80% of it doesn't matter if you're using a row or a column. There are certain cases where it will matter and you'll get weird errors in your code about dimension mismatch and things like that when you are using the wrong one in that circumstance. So when those come up, just be careful and make sure you're using the right row or column that you need for that situation. Now for these, I can access any individual element of an array by putting the number of parentheses after it. So let me make a different one that's gonna be more sort of interesting to see. Let me instead make this array be four, minus one, and five. Now if I want to get at that minus one, I can put ARR parentheses two, and that will pull out the minus one from that array. Big things here. Indexing for MATLAB starts at one. It does not start at zero. So ARR of one is the first entry being a four, if I try to do AR of zero, it's gonna tell me that that's a problem. Indices must be positive integers or logical values. So indexing starts at one, AR of zero doesn't mean anything, which means the last guy is AR of three is the last guy, or using the length function, length of AR is three, I can get the last value by calling AR of length of AR. Looks confusing but length gives you how many values are in the array, and since anything starts at one, that is the last value. If you've coded anything like a Java or a C++, I assume, you would need to do a minus one that at the last value because anything starts at zero. For math, since it starts at one, the last value is at the length index, not the length minus one index. A lot of times when using arrays, you're gonna to wanna to fill them in using a looping structure or something else, and you'll want to pre-allocate space. The normal way that is done is with the zeros command. So if I type zeros, I can say do zeros of three. And that gives me a two dimensional three by three array of numbers that are zero to fill in later. If I want to get a row or a column vector, I can put multi dimensions in here. So I can put zeros of, I want one row and three columns. That gets me a row of three numbers. I can swap those zeros three one to get the column. I can also do more than two dimensions. So I can do zeros of say two, two, two. And because we don't have a way to display it directly in MATLAB, what it does is it puts them by slicing along this last parameter here. So colon, colon one means take that first, take one from the last parameter. That's these four numbers. Then you take two and you get these four numbers. So generally you'll want to use this to sort of pre-build your array and then fill it as you go. That's technically better from a computer point of view because you're pre-allocating the memory and you're not having to generate the memory, allocate it as you're computing the values. So how do we fill arrays? We we'll generally fill arrays and use them with loops. So let's go back into our script here. We'll suppress that output and let's make an array we're gonna fill with a loop. So let's call it M for our array here and we're gonna make it a one by 10 array. So that's gonna be a row of 10 elements. Now, if I want to loop to count things, there are two main looping structures in MATLAB. There is the for loop and there is the while loop. So let's start with the for loop, it's probably the simpler one. So it looks something like this. 
So this loop says 4k from 1 to 10. So k is our index, it's gonna be what's counting up our loop. We start at the value of one, we go to the value of 10, and we, in the loop, do some stuff, and then end wraps up the loop. In the loop, we have our commands. Here it says set m of k to be k minus two. So if I run this, think to yourself what m is gonna look like. You can kind of see a hint over there. And if I look at it, every value is just the index minus two. So this was one, goes down to minus one, two goes to zero, and so on down the line. So it's stepped through the entire loop and dumped them into the array at each step of the process. The second sort of loop is a while loop, which could look something like this. So while condition do this code. So as long as the condition is true, it's gonna keep running this code. And this code says add one to every entry in M while we're looping through the array. So it's gonna do while, while this is true, it's gonna do this, check if it's true again at every step of the loop process, and then get to the end. So if I run this one, now we'll see M has stepped up to the point where m of five is 10 because that made this condition false and it stopped looping. In MATLAB, there is no equivalent for a do while loop where the condition is at the end of the loop. If you're using a while loop, you have to structure it in such a way that you can put the condition at the start and go through it from there. There are some more fancy things you can do with loops, including things like the break command that will get you out of a loop if a certain condition is met, but that's more tricky and look it up if you want to use it on your own, but it's not necessary to do things here. Last thing to mention here is branching structure, decision structures in MATLAB, which are if statements. So the basic if statement is just if condition code end. So if that value is two, set it to one, I'm getting a warning here because I need a double equal sign here. So in MATLAB, the single equal sign is the assignment operator. It says, take the thing on the right and store it to the variable on the left. The double equals says, check if these things are equal, if so, return true, if not, return false. There are many other sort of Boolean operators or condition checks like this in MATLAB. There'll be a link to the MATLAB page to describe that below. Less than is one, less equal is one, equals equals is one. These are all the different condition operators you can write to see what goes on here. So if condition code end. What if you want more than that? Well, you can also have an else statement. So if this is true, do the first thing, if not, do the second thing. And this catches anything that's not true from above, it just falls into here, does that code and moves on. Lastly, you can go one step further with this and have an else if statement, where now it's gonna check the if statement. If that's true, it does the thing and leaves the entire statement past the end. Then it will go in here, it'll check this condition because it's on an else if. If it's true, it does this, it leaves the entire thing. If neither of these are true, it then does the last bit of code. The else always has to be the last one in the check, and the if has to be first, and you can have as many else if statements in between that you want. So what can you do with all this? We well, can also nest these together to get some more intricate things. So let's reset our m to be the vector from one to 10 again. Here's what I wanna do to m. I wanna take m, and I want to find the even entries in m, divide them all by two, and set all the odd ones to zero. That's what I wanna do with m here. That's gonna be a loop combined with an if statement. Take a second think at what that might look like, and I'll put the code in here for that. And so that's what that code would look like. Another command here is mod, that is the remainder when you divide some number by some other number. Also, as a point, these warning messages are because I'm not using this code here, right? It's like, but you just reset M, why are you doing this? Well, because I'm doing a demo. Um, but this is generally a sign that you're, you sort of redefined variables that don't match up correctly. Now, if I were to run this code, what we would expect to see is that M is going to have zeros in the odd positions and one, two, three, four, five in the even ones because it's all those numbers divided by two. So you can put all this together to get you some nice things you can do with MATLAB code in these branching and loop structures. As a side note, there is also an easier way to do this using Boolean operations in MATLAB, and that is something like this. So if I run this chunk of code instead, I get the same M at the end. This is what are called Boolean operators. The fact that this is a Boolean means the zero or one, which makes things work out nicely. If you wanna look more at this, you can. These are pretty cool, but they also aren't necessary for the labs that will be assigned. The main things to know about are how do for loops work, how do if statements work, how can you write them, and how can you make them do the right things you need for your code for these different lab assignments.